again. Uh, I got the Hummer back to my shop. It took about an hour and a half drive to get it there, ran great. It idled high, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, had a few issues with the oil cooler lines. Um, but all in all, it went really good. The motor runs great, has tons of power, really smooth, hit 70 miles an hour for the first time ever in the Humvee, which, you know, is what it is. But now I'm headed down to Summit Racing because there were a few things that I forgot to get for, to kind of finish stuff up. I've got to get an air hat that fits. I did order one thinking it would fit and it doesn't. So I've got to get a different air hat to hook back up to the snorkel. Um, so all that will run right and then I've got to get some plugs for the oil cooler lines um, Alternator alternator wiring uh, Just a bunch of stuff. So I'm headed there now and uh, I'll get back with you to shop Hey everybody, uh, I got the Hummer back to my shop now So we're gonna start doing some uh, quick changes. Let me see. Can you see that? Yeah, there it is so <clears throat> first things first the hood's not on it. I put the body lift, so I have to put the, the spacers in here, but I need help putting the hood on. There are some things I've got to fix first. So obviously you'll see like it has an old pie style hot rod air filter on it. Um, that's getting changed because right now I can't fit the doghouse on the back. Uh, it's obviously not hooked to the snorkel like it needs to be. So I'll show you in a second what I'm gonna do there. I've got to put a different alternator on it because that's a DR44 alternator and it has the two pins. It'll put out a constant 13.8 volts, but uh, it will not regulate above 13.8. So I'm gonna change that over to an older, like 2002 style, 145 amp alternator. And then I'm sure you can see the upper radiator hose, which is an absolute mess. But it's what it took to get it to run, to get it to work. Uh, I drove it over an hour and a half here from the shop that did the swap for me. It's got the MSD box. It's got, you know, some wiring that needs to be looked at. Um, but first, let me show you. All right, so we got that air filter. This is what's gonna replace it. Super low profile. We only have from the throttle body to the top of the windshield or bottom of the windshield frame, maybe three and a half inches. So uh, I tried a different hat, didn't work. This hat's, uh, as thin as you can get it's two i think 2.4 inches with a four inch inlet which is exact same size as our snorkel so i'm gonna go ahead and put that on let's see how it looks so that's the sniper efi system oh come on please please fit Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There it is. That is a tight fit, guys. Let's go inside and take a look at it from in here. So yeah, that is a super tight fit. Get about a finger in there, it's about all I can get. Luckily, the mounting hole is recessed. We've got that big four inch, let's see, big four inch tube coming off of there. I'm happy with that, but man, is it tight. It does not come on and off easy. So uh, we'll see, I'm gonna play with a little more. I'll show you some of the stuff I'm gonna use to get from here to the uh, snorkel, and we'll get that intake put on so I can put the doghouse back on this thing. All right, so we know this works. It is a Spectra intake. Uh, Part number 98499, I'll put a um, link in the description. This one was important because it's super thin, 2.4 inches I think, but it has the four inch inlet, which matches the snorkel system. And I'll show you some other stuff that I have that kind of goes along with that. Um, to make this, I'm not gonna say waterproof, but more watertight. Um, I've got a rubber gasket that's going to go around here, obviously. And then on the top, um, what you would normally have is a threaded rod stud, quarter 20, because it's a holly, but I went and got a bolt. So the bolt goes down. Now, obviously, that's not um, at all waterproof or watertight. So you get a washer, still not waterproof, not watertight, because there's that gap in the bolt. So what I went and got was a rubber washer 
for a one size smaller bolt than a quarter 20 because it doesn't just slide in. You have to actually thread it. So I'm going to put the washer on first, thread the rubber washer on, and see how tight that is. I don't know if I can get it on the camera, but there is no space for water to get through quickly. I mean, it might get through, but again, if water is at this point on my Hummer, I'm probably five feet, four and a half feet deep, and that's not where I want to be. So that is the rubber washer with the washer on top. That came together really nice. And then just use a wrench, so I'll put that on. Still gives me about a little less than three quarters of an inch which is exactly how much the holly takes i'll slide that over i'll bolt that down and i will have an intake all right so that in theory worked um let's see you can see it's together the bolt whoa the bolt is in there That's, that was not easy um my big fat hands don't fit in between that and the top of the hummer so uh, it was some finagling, some finding the right bolt length. There is no room. Um, so getting it to it from the back, you can see I can't even, I can reach around here and get to it, but there is a, eh, it's hard to see, but there is definitely some aluminum there. So uh, yeah, that's literally as about that thick between the body and the hat, but the hat is on there. It's not going anywhere. So now I've got to go from the four inch opening right there to the four inch opening on the snorkel. And I'm about to show you how I'm gonna do that. All right, so this was actually what I intended on using. It is the air hat off of a 5.9 Dodge Ram truck, like 1994 year model. Has the four inch opening, the Holly throttle body side. It does not have a hole in the top which I was gonna to try to use a, a clamp down here, but um, this is too fat. It will not fit too much vertical space. It won't even go over the throttle body because the throttle body has the stud in the middle of it where the actual rod, threaded rod goes in. And so that was a waste of some money. Um, but how I'm gonna connect the snorkel up is this stuff. So this is, from a company called Riva, R-I-V-A. It is four inches inner diameter. As you can see, it is very flexible. It is extremely heavy duty. It is waterproof, watertight. It's actually made for high performance boats and jet skis. Um, it is called Canaflex with a K. I don't know if I can get that on there. Canaflex, excuse my phone. Um, made in the USA, it's uh, also used as pump hose, um, so really durable, really heavy duty. So I'm literally just going to run this up to that new hat, run it over to the snorkel box, hose clamp, hose clamp, done and done. So I'll show it to you when I get it finished. Alright, so there it is. We've got the new intake housing or intake hat run to that Canatec hose into the snorkel. I've got some uh, hose clamps, put two there, one there. I'm gonna have to take it all apart because I gotta put the PCV valve has to be tapped into that, but um, I'm really happy with it. I, I like the way it looks. It should be somewhat waterproof. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm real happy with the way it turned out. All right, so you'll see we're under the truck now and we're staring at an oil leak. So where would this oil leak come from? A lot of thoughts crossed my mind. Did the drive shaft eat up the oil filter? Um, is the oil pan leaking? You know, what is the issue? But when you look a little closer, I'm gonna move this. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Well, we didn't hook up the oil cooler lines. And when we took a hard turn under power, the oil that was left in the oil cooler decided to take a dump all over my exhaust and all over the frame. Now, all I have to do, let me get this back up right here, is take these plugs, these are AN-10, and plug up the holes. So I'm gonna do that.
All right, so there we go. Let me zoom in. That's it. I got the AN plugs on them. And uh, easy fix. And no, the LS motor does not and will not have an oil cooler. And I'll be honest with you, it doesn't need one. Let me show you why. Let me see if I can come down here. Got a little bit going on here with the where the oil cooler would go is right behind the drive shaft yoke front drive shaft then you got the oil filter here and about a finger's width so it's really tight in there and there was no way oil f fittings were going to fit in uh, on this motor all right so what we're looking at doing now is bleeding out the hydraulic system because in this ls swap the um this hydraulic hose right here had to be extended to the pump and so when they did that, a lot of uh, fluid or a lot of air got in the system and it squeals real loud. So I'm going to go through and uh, bleed it out. If you've never bled one of these, you jack the front tires off the ground. They're off the ground. And you literally just kind of press the brake real slow. You go back and forth with the steering wheel real slow. Lock to lock as many, you know, 40 to 50 times. And that should get all the air bubbles out. We shall see um, how it does. I'll let you know. I don't want to bore you with spinning the steering wheel 40 different times. All right, so I have bled the system one time. Um, that is the aftermath. So huge air bubbles. Like I would turn the wheels real slow, um, or turn the wheel real slow, kind of pressing the brake every now and again, but um, I'd get it almost to lock and it would literally just pour out and you could see it bubbling. I mean, like a witch's cauldron, just bubble, 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 bubble. So I think it's gonna help. I don't think I did it long enough. I only did like 20 or 30 turns back and forth with the brakes and things. So I don't think I did it enough. That's a lot of fluid that it popped out of there. I checked it, it's good. It's on uh, full cold. So I'm gonna drive it a little bit, see how it does. And I'll probably end up having to do this three or four more times. Unless you comment below and tell me how to do this quicker, which I would greatly appreciate. All right, so uh, what did we do today? We got the hat bolted on, the old school filter taken off. I can put the doghouse on now. Um, got it plumbed to the snorkel. Drives great. Much, much, much quieter. Now that that filter's not sitting in my lap, it's over here. Um, we plugged the oil cooler lines so they wouldn't dump oil all over the frame and create a smoke show anymore. And I bled the power steering and I uh, had a huge mess over here. It's kind of cleaned up a little bit. Um, it's much quieter on the power steering, but I am gonna have to bleed it a few more times. I think it's not as quiet as I want it. Still moans and groans just a little bit. Way better than it was before the start of the day, but yeah, so that's it guys. Good bit of work today but we got a long way to go.